guys, what's up? It's me, El, and I'm back for another video. So, this video will be a little different because about a month ago, I was given the opportunity to try out a really mind blowing phone that I have never reviewed anything similar to in my entire life and that phone is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G and this is really exciting and I'm really excited to bring you guys along with me for the whole duration that I've had this phone and I will share my thoughts and experience along with you guys. Let's go! For the first day, of course, I unboxed the phone and I was more than impressed with how the packaging was designed. Okay, so I'm very excited to unbox this really really beautiful box right here this is the samsung galaxy z fold 2 5g and i've been waiting to unbox this for so long and finally it's here with me well based from the box this is the mystic bronze variant so let's go ahead and open it up okay really beautiful butterfly design i really love this plus it has the mystic bronze color Ta <laughs> okay first you are greeted with a paper sleeve boop, boop. i assume this has the documentations that you need okay so this is the phone and this does come with a care instruction manual that you have to read this is my first time holding a foldable phone, so I am handling it with the utmost care that it needs. I've never, ever touched a foldable phone, nor have I folded a foldable phone. So this is going to be pretty exciting. First fold. This is my first fold. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, so now that it's folded, it looks like a regular phone, of course, but I do think this is a very slim, very narrow screen on the front cover. And once folded, it is a pretty, pretty thick phone. Kind of like having two phones. It's a little heavy, a little hefty, but it's not so bad. And regardless, I do think you get to enjoy the best of both worlds of having a phone and a tablet. So kind of like a phablet, you know? Well, inside the box, you also get a fast charger, set of earphones, and the USB type C charger, which is good. I spent the first week getting to know this device and basically claimed it as my own by then. And at first, you really have to be careful when it comes to handling an expensive and foldable phone like this one, but once you get the hang of it, the folding aspect of the phone becomes natural. So far, I used this phone to watch a lot of YouTube videos and some Netflix shows in my downtime, and I thoroughly enjoyed the video quality, all thanks to its 7.6 inch foldable dynamic AMOLED main display, and I honestly prefer to use the larger screen on this whenever I'm watching videos. I normally use the 6.2 inch super AMOLED front display to check the time, reply to urgent messages on the fly, and because of its screen real estate, it's the perfect size for scrolling through your endless feed. Still, all displays on this phone serve its purpose and it delivers amazing colors and a smooth experience because aside from its AMOLED display, this device has an adaptive screen refresh rate. You get a solid 60Hz on the cover screen and an adaptive 120Hz on the inside. When it comes to productivity, I use this phone to multitask with work, writing scripts, replying to emails with its incredible multi-screen feature. Well, considering that this phone slash tablet has a fairly huge screen, typing on this wasn't much of a hassle, all thanks to its split keyboard feature. That makes it absolutely easy for your hands to move around and press the keys you want for your messages. All right, so I understand that this phone was made for the purpose of multitasking and productivity. But I'll be really honest with you guys, because of its internals, starting from the Snapdragon 865 to 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage space, and if you pair it up with its massive main display, this straight up became my go-to gaming phone. 
In terms of playing games on this device, most of the games I've played were seamless and smooth. I didn't really have to worry about storage since it has a lot of that. However, there are some games that look good and offer a good map advantage when played using the main display. But given its square-shaped size, there are some apps that do get cropped out or some won't adjust its app size to the screen. So whenever that happens, I normally fold the phone and use the app on the front cover. Basically, cope up with the crop if you are kind of picky when it comes to your games is that you fold it and you open the app once again on your phone. Now you get the full game experience without the crop. And if anything, you actually have excess um, space because of how narrow the screen is. So now that I'm using the cover screen for the game, you get the usual 2021 phone feel. No crops at all, and if anything, you get the full view of the game. Well, on games like ML League or Genshin, you do get a really amazing map advantage when it comes to using this screen for your gaming. So that's one thing that I really love about this phone. Powering this phone is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which lasted about a day or two with moderate usage. So I didn't have to worry about charging most of the time. The Z Fold 2 has stereo speakers. You can find one speaker on the bottom and another one on the top. Here's an audio sample. Okay, so I've been using this phone right now. I've been playing some wordscapes on it. And yeah, I've basically been chilling, um, killing some time before I get picked up. And I've got some work done. I worked on some scripts using this tablet as well. And now I'm using it for more games and basically taking a break. Then after that, I'll go back to work. So yeah, just a quick update. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 has two 10 megapixel selfie cameras, one on the cover and another one on the inside. Whereas for the main camera, this does have a triple camera setup located in a noticeable camera bump that houses its 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. So far, I was beyond impressed with this phone's camera features. The colors were almost true to life, and it has a lot of built in camera features that you can play around with from AR Doodle, Pro, Panorama, Food, Night, Portrait, Portrait Video, Pro Video, Super Slow Mo, Slow Motion, Hyperlapse, and Dual Recording, all of which are fun and creative modes that you can play around with to produce some creative shots. The photos came out crisp and sharp with well balanced tones. And when it comes to video recording, I noticed that this phone does have some video stabilization features and it shows in the footage that I recorded. This was a handy phone and I can't seem to let go of this device anytime soon since it has everything I need for work and for my regular media consumption. But if you are able to get your hands on this device, based from my experience of using the phone for a little over a month, I have to say that the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, that is a lot of words. Let's just call it the Z Fold 2. The Z Fold 2 is a pretty solid deal for a multitasking machine that can offer you the best of both worlds of basically owning a 2021 high-end 5G phone with an option of folding it open into a decent sized tablet, or should I say, tablet. Regardless, Samsung is definitely showing us that they are one of the most impressive and innovative brands out there to be able to provide us with cutting edge tech such as this one. Will we see more of it or maybe a possible Z Fold 3 in the future? Who knows? I hope so. But till then, do you guys think that we will see more foldable tech in the future? Comment them down below and share your thoughts. Also, don't forget to check out Unbox.ph for more awesome content. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe because at 250k subs, we'll be giving away a free phone. So that was another awesome gadget out of the box. This was me, Al, and I'll see you guys next time.